In this video, we're going to talk about ABGs, arterial blood gases. We're going to try to talk about everything we can about them. We'll start with equipment, and we'll go to technique, and we'll go to my five tips for success. All right, so we're all ready to go. We have our ABG arm. We have all of our equipment that we need, and we have our gloves, of course. So let's glove up. So we have our heparinized syringe with our 23 gauge needle. We have our gall prep, we have our two by two gauze, and we have our band-aid ready to go. Okay. Now, first thing that I do when I'm getting uh, the needle ready for the ABG is there's this little guide on here. Okay? And this, if you don't position this properly, it'll get in the way. So when I put the needle on, we wanna go bevel up. When we go in to get this sample, we wanna go bevel up. So I make sure I can twist this and adjust the where I'm gonna have the bevel and I put the gauze off to the side here, okay, so it doesn't get in my way, okay? So I got that ready to go. I have my alcohol that I pre-open, and I have my gauze that I pre-open, put this next to the patient, and I have my uh, Band-Aid, which I've taken off half of it, and I'm going to have it ready to go, so I can just grab it one-handed after I stick our patient, okay? So, patient's ready. I was unable to find a human volunteer, so Mr. Arm is going to have to do, okay? I've already explained the procedure to this patient. I've checked the armband, make sure that they're the right patient. And the first thing I'm going to do, textbook, is I'm going to do Allen's test. Okay, the Allen's test, so you know, it's uh, controversial. It's not something that uh, you probably will see a lot, okay? But it's good to know about this. It is something that... Um, uh, governing bodies want us to do and we'll actually chart that we do it and do you do it all the time probably not okay a lot of our patients are out of it and can't cooperate and they're vented so they're not going to be able to cooperate because the allen's test uh, requires that there's cooperation so what we do we take our patient and we're going to check we're basically checking for um see if we have collateral blood flow from the ulnar to the radial artery okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take the arm we're going to occlude the radial and the ulnar artery. Okay, we're gonna have our patient make a fist and hold it for 30 seconds. Okay, this patient was is not cooperative, but if they were, they would make this fist. And 30 seconds, we're going to release the ulnar. Okay, the hand should be white. And what we're looking for is blood flow returning within 10 seconds. Okay, and that shows us that we have uh, collateral blood flow. Now, um, current studies show that the ability of this Allen's test to predict uh, rare ischemic complications is limited. Okay, so it's, it's, it's the evidence, it's neither supported nor refuted, but it's good to know what the Allen's test is and how we do it, okay? All right, so let's go to get our blood sample. First thing about getting ABG is location. Okay, we're gonna think about where we're gonna get this, okay? Because we wanna get this on the first try. ABG's hurt, okay, we go through blood, We or we go through muscle, tendon, we go through nerves, it hurts. Okay? It's, not a, it's not a venous puncture where we can look, see them and we're gonna go a superficial poke. We have to go deeper, okay? So these, these really hurt. Um, now the, the artery is pulsatile, it's stronger than the vein. So in, in that way it's, e it's easier, but um, it's, it's still tricky because you're not, you're not looking for it, you're feeling for it. Uh, good thing about arteries is they don't roll. If you're used to vein, vein puncture where there's rolling veins, the the artery really doesn't move much, and it's pretty strong. And it's even strong enough to withhold with to withstand uh, blood pressure cuff. As people go, oh, what the blood pressure cuff's going off? It's you know that might stop it. Uh, yes, but probably not. The the artery is going to flow through uh, flow through that. Okay, so but. Uh, I you know I like to make sure that they're not getting a blood pressure when I'm when I'm doing it. just anything that's going to help. Okay. Uh, so speaking of anything that's going to help me, uh, first thing I'm going to do is position myself where I'm comfortable. Okay. A lot of RTs or practitioners will bend over. They get these weird positions, take a knee. The bed has an adjustment on it. I'll either raise or lower the bed as needed, and I want to get the arm in the right spot so I'm comfortable setting up and my back isn't craning over or whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that we, I get in a comfortable spot where I can find, I can do my work, okay? Make the adjustments, whatever you have. This is, think, see this as an invasive procedure. Like when you're setting up, when doctor's setting up for, put a center line, 
they're setting up. They've got their good position. They get all their stuff ready. They get make sure that they know, you know, they're in the most comfortable spot to get it and things right out of the way. Do the same things with ABGs. Take them seriously. Don't just go in there and just poke wherever you're leaning. If, if you can move stuff around or wait at the right time, do it because you don't want to fill them full of holes, okay? So, uh, first thing I'm going to think of is if their patient's talking, are they right handed, left handed? Uh, the dominant hand usually has a stronger pulse because it's used the most, okay? But that's not always the case. I'm going to check for both uh, and I'm going to go for the stronger pulse because I'll have a better uh, chance of getting it, okay? Um, we're going to do a radial pulse, but just know that there's other locations. We could go uh, brachial, okay? So if we don't have it here, we're going to feel for the radial pulse and we don't have really good circulation, we could go up to the brachial, okay? And the brachial will be between the elbow and the bicep on the inner side, okay? So we'll feel here, and if we get a good brachial, we'll go for that, okay? And that's a different approach. We're gonna go straight in, okay? The angle for the radial, as you'll see, it's going to be this 45 degree angle, okay? And we're gonna hold it like a pencil. If you're used to vein of puncture, where you hold it like this, this is a little different. You're gonna hold it like a pencil because you're gonna th you're gonna come into the angle like this, okay? So we have our uh, patient position in the right spot, okay? Another thing we could do, use gravity, okay? If we could use, if we could somehow get the arm down, okay? And then we could use gravity to help us uh, improve our chances. Also, you want this taut, you want this tight as possible, okay? So there's certain things you could do. If you have a little towel, you could roll it up, make like this little. All right, so we have our patient all ready to go. Nice skin is nice and taut. Okay, we've used gravity, we've used positioning, we found the strongest pulse, and we know where we're going to poke. Okay, so we have our alcohol, and then I know where exactly where my gauze is right after I get the poke, because I'm gonna immediately grab for this, and I'm gonna hold pressure, okay? So, I'm gonna clean our sight, I'm gonna feel the pulse, okay? Our needle, we're gonna take off the cap, okay? make sure that we're bevel up, Okay, and then we'll feel the pulse. Okay, you notice, got my finger on it, okay? And I'm gonna take the needle and I'm going to replace where my needle, where my finger was. I'm gonna roll off, okay? Because I wanna think the artery is going, this strong pulsatile thing. It's not a, it's not a vein, veins are very uh, superficial. This is deep, so it's, and it's very strong, okay? So we're gonna feel it. And I want to get in front of it, okay? So I'm going to go roll, okay? So when I feel it, I'm going to take the needle, bevel up, I'm going to go at a 45 degree angle, and I'm in, okay? And I'm gonna look for a flash, okay? Oh, and we got our flash, okay? So we're gonna leave the needle in as long as we have to, to get about one to two cc's of blood, okay? I'm going to, once I get that, I'm going to grab four my two by two, and I'm going to hold pressure, cap the needle, hold pressure while I grab for my band-aid that's already up, okay? We're going to tightly put this on, okay? And how long are we gonna hold pressure? Five to 10 minutes, or as needed, okay? Depending on the patient, how much they're bleeding, check it, see if it's bleeding, stop bleeding. Okay, let's go ahead and put our Band-Aid on, so we have our needle cap, okay? Then we're going to make sure that all the bubbles are out of this. And from the sample, it looks venous, right? But however, it's fake blood, number one. And number two, sometimes you'll get a patient who's, uh, their hypoxemia is so bad that it's gonna, they're actually gonna have this dark blood, okay? But it's, it happens, okay? So don't, uh, don't give up too quickly. If it comes up fast, it's usually arterial, okay? Uh, so we have this, put in a sharp spin, and we're gonna take our cap, and we're gonna squeeze it all the way to the top, make sure all the bubbles out, okay? Get this ready to run. And we wanna run this uh, for accuracy, we wanna, wanna run it within 10 minutes, okay? That's the new guidelines for this, 10 minutes, okay? If you're gonna send it off to the lab, you don't wanna put it on ice and get it to the lab immediately. All right, okay? so let's say that you're doing your ABG, and you don't get the flash right away, okay? So you don't wanna give up. Okay, you wanna think about this. Let's picture where our arteries are. So let's say, let's 
let's say there's our, our radial artery, okay? So we hit, let's say we, we're getting our blood, we palpate the pulse, we put it in the right spot, and we're gonna get our blood, okay? So let's say we poke, and we don't get a flash, okay? So what you wanna do, though, is you feel the pulse, okay? Maybe you're going in the wrong direction. See how our artery is straight? and you're kind of off to the side, okay? So what you could do is withdraw a little bit, not all the way to the skin surface, and then you're gonna redirect, okay? And you're gonna go back in, and all, all right, we got a flash, okay? You make sure that you do these moves very subtle, okay? Because this is a lot of very painful, okay? But you wanna think about that. You wanna think about which way the direction the artery is going, okay? and you want to be right in front of it, okay? You want to be off to the side, you may miss it, okay? Maybe if you don't want to be off to the side, or this way, off to the side, okay? Or you don't want to go through it, okay? If you go through it, you might go past the artery and miss it. You may want to slowly withdraw, and then you'll get your flash. There you go, let's look at that, okay? So, but look, this takes practice. It takes a million of these to do. It All patients are different, okay? But we all have the same Arteries, most of them, they're in, usually in the same place, okay? We've actually done, uh, you're gonna get so good at this that you'll do anatomical pokes where you won't even feel it, okay? And you're kinda just kinda guess where it is, and this is what I'm gonna picture. So I'm gonna picture it's here, and then same thing for the, for the brachial, okay? It's gonna come here, here's the ulnar, okay? And I'm gonna picture where these are at, and I'm gonna to have to go there. And sometimes you'll get a sick patient and you won't be, it won't be palpable and you'll actually have to do an anatomical poke and that's something that uh, you'll learn to do later uh, as you get better at these. So okay. if you tried everything, you tried to get, if you tried uh, poke them twice, you did the, you couldn't find a radial or a brachial either side and you're kinda of out of options. Another option is, if, you're, if your facility allows it, is ephemeral uh, artery poke. And I don't have a groin here to show you that, but it's pretty easy to find ephemeral poke. Usually when you're in the code blues, you, that's, you know, when we're checking for a central pulse, we get the carotid and we have the femoral. And the femoral is a good target, okay, you could feel it. Uh, I do recommend though, if you're going to do ephemeral, get a longer needle. They have these noodles, this one's a one and a half uh, long needle. And we could take the same syringe and we have our extra long needle you have to get in there it's pretty scary looking okay but it's a uh, pretty if you got a pretty thick patient you're gonna have to you need this extra length to get to it okay and we want to you know it's like it, th those are pretty hard to miss you feel the femoral bounding pulse you just go straight in you don't need to do you don't need to angle it in get get it and you fill it and you're gonna have to hold pressure a little bit longer uh, than your radial okay get someone to help you get a holder for you um, uh, but yeah, that's another option also, okay? All right, those are my five ABG tips. Let's go over them. Number one, strongest pulse. We want to better our chances of getting this ABG first and not poke around, first try, get it, bam. And that's what we want to do. So what are we going to do? Find the strongest pulse. And most people statistically are right-handed. So we're going to go for that dominant hand. We're going to try that first. We'll go right radial. And most ABGs statistically are done on the right radial, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that that's where we're gonna go first and start poking, okay? We're gonna pick the best pulse, the strongest pulse. So we're gonna choose our location wisely, okay? If they have a better pulse in the left brachial, right brachial, we're gonna go for that, okay? Because we wanna find it and get it and nail it, okay? Number three, ergonomics, okay? Let's improve our chances of getting that ABG in the first try, okay? Now, I know that there's codes and traumas and situations where you're gonna be like in weird contortions doing all this stuff to get your labs, and that happens, okay? There's things you gotta do sometimes, but if you could somehow make it more comfortable, take the patient bed, raise it or lower it, fire up the lights, get in a spot where you could stand comfortably without doing all this weird stuff, do that, okay? Improve your chances of getting this ABG by getting comfortable. Plus, it's a long career. You don't wanna hurt your back doing this weird stuff, okay? Number four, use gravity, okay? All this setting up, you know, that blood flows this way, okay? Get that gas, go ahead and use gravity. Use what you can, use all the tricks that you can to help make sure that you're 
getting this ABG in the first try. Okay, a little preparation is gonna make all the difference. In case you don't just go in there and their arms bent weird and you try to get it, okay? Go ahead and give them some, give them some room, okay? Get that arm out, okay? You just get it to hang, okay? Number five, be confident, okay? You can't go in there and go, um, Henry, I, I'm, I'm, I'll see if I can get this gas, I miss all the, no, you gotta go in there and go, look, I'm Henry, I'm gonna get the ABG, this is my job, I'm gonna grab it, nail it on the first try, get it, okay? You can't go in there thinking you're gonna fail because you will, okay? And how do you get this confidence? Practice, okay? You gotta practice 100 people, 1,000 people, okay? Get it right, build up your confidence, and how do you do that? The best way to do it, find vented, intubated, sedated patients. They're not gonna complain, okay? But you'll get your practice in, and they won't even remember it after you exhibit them, okay? So get in, get in your practice, practice makes perfect, and that's how you build your confidence for this stuff, because it takes confidence, it takes skill, it takes preparation, okay? Let's add a number six to this, okay? Venus, Venus ABG, Venus gases, VBGs, okay? Let's say that you do all these things and you keep missing, okay? There's days where you're gonna miss everything. You hit the broad side of a barn, you're gonna miss ABGs, okay? Just know that in your back pocket, you have this other option of getting a venous, okay? Because someone's gonna be able to get some venous blood. And with that venous blood, we get the pH, the CO2, the bicarb, get their acid base, okay? So that's always an option, okay? So here's our five, six steps now. Hopefully they help. Thank you for watching.